All right, it's in between. Um, as we teased, Richard has some Lou Ferrigno news. You want to you wanna share that right up front? Uh, it won't well, be I mean, timely at this point when you are actually here, but yeah. Well, but, you know, if you want to, you could go from London and travel back in time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And listen uh-huh. to the concert. Back to the speed of light to meet Lou Ferrigno at my store on Thursday of this week. So we have an opportunity or we have Lou Ferrigno coming to the shop on Thursday of this week. This is January, so by the time you guys hear this podcast, it is probably not happening or already done. I'll have it already story. happened. Way Maybe happened. I'll have Lou, stories about Lou Friggin on the next in between. How about yeah, I that? would love that. Yeah. So his, you know, it's, it's for people who actors and celebrities and um, who make kind of their living after Hollywood by going to conventions and meeting fans and you know signing autographs for ten bucks or twenty bucks or taking photos to meet with the fans. Um, with COVID happening right now, for a lot of them, that's been really hard because they're not getting the same uh, types of income as they had before because they're not acting in Hollywood. That you know, that Lou Ferrigno, for all we know, is typecast and really can't find roles as Lou Ferrigno um, anymore. Or this is the way a lot of them make income. And so a few of them have kind of figured out that they could actually make visits to local stores or shops or places like that that doesn't require a convention doesn't require thousands of people doesn't require masks can be put on safely and um so he's doing a small comic book shop tour and we're going to be one of his stops on thursday so how does that how does that happen that he finds you or chooses you do you have people that help you find these things or was it your reputation that helped him find you uh well so i don't actively typically seek out these kinds of stuff unless there's somebody that I specifically want. So say, for example, I want a particular writer or artist, I'll begin communications with them about coming in. For celebrities, I don't typically reach them out because I have no idea. I don't know what they're, what it costs to bring them here. If they have a minimum, sometimes celebrities have a minimum. Like if you want them to come to your store, you have to guarantee them they're going to make $5 at the, or $5,000 at their, at the event, right? Some, some weird number like that. But we did a signing a few months ago and you guys remember this for Jason David Frank, the green, the original green ranger. And he did very, very well that day. Lots of people came out. And so it's kind of getting around that Zeus would be a shop to go to to get people to come out and see that. Now, that said, Lou is coming in. We have just barely a week's notice that he's going to be here. Uh, He's going to be here on a Thursday. I think he's actually going to other shops as well. Uh, We did chip in for his part of his airfare and hotel to, to make sure that he isn't losing any money to come here. Um, But we, you know, we were trying to get the word out so that people will actually come and, and, Pay this, um, you know, this um, wonderful actor and, and part of our childhood and fandom uh, a little bit of support and respect for this. So hopefully he does well when he's there. I, I, I'm, ask, I'm not asking you to say what it is, but do you happen to know what his rates are for autographs? Yes. If you go, if you go and stuff? if you go and look at the email that I sent out today, it's in there. Okay. Sometimes people are a little sensitive about that, whether they announce their prices in advance or not. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd ask that information to be able to share, so I think it's okay to share. But let's see, he is yeah, Lou Ferrigno is Lou Ferrigno is for a signed. Now he'll he'll have the photos with him for a signed eight by ten. It's forty dollars, which is actually not too terribly bad. If you want two mm-hmm. signed eight by tens, it's sixty dollars. Forty dollars for a selfie. Now keep in mind there'll be masks and distancing kind of in this, so it'll be one of those little. We're going to angle it in such a way that looks like you're side by side, yeah. but you're yeah, not really yeah. side by side. Um, you know, and then. Uh, if you bring an item for him to sign, he's going to sign personal items for 80 bucks. So I think that's a little on the high side, but that's just my opinion of what I'd spend my money on. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's an opportunity. We have, we'll have like a little acrylic guard that is up, kind of like a sneeze guard. So there'll be a little bit of a barrier between the two of you and Lou. I've, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited. I got to figure out what stuff is, again, at short notice. So I got to figure out what we can have there. You're going to have out there, yeah. Signed. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't even put all that together yet. And it's Sunday now, and he's going to be here on Thursday. I got to well, figure this out. Uh, and then excited. Friday, and then Friday, you go on to Austin, and then Friday go to Austin for the fittest experience. So, so and before Sean's we travel, busy week. well, before we travel there, let's be fair to everyone. Now, you, by the time you hear this, you, you're not going to be able to act on this information if you're in the Dallas Correct. area and come see. see but he may Luke. be going to a store near you. He may continue this over the course of the spring and the so summer. You have a heads up, yeah. Well, what right. I also we're not do... we're not resuming conventions yet. I don't know. And what I also want to do is make sure for those people that that don't know, Zeus Comics, owned by our our dear friend Richard, ZeusComics.com. You can also find them if you're in Dallas at 1334 Inwood Road. Correct. Correct. Uh, and 
Come on, Correct. stop by. Well, Hopefully you'd get to meet a celebrity of a, of a podcast yeah. and hang out. And I'm talking about you, Mr. Weightlifter dude. <laughs> so, the, I, I, so, so I PR'd yesterday, my deadlift. Mm -hmm. so and you I'm posted a video about that. That's why I we kind of know. I did. I, I posted a video. I keep replaying the video because I'm like, wow, that's <laughs> pretty cool. Um, so there's an event this coming weekend right after we're done with Lou. I drive down to Austin, and I'm actually traveling down there with Sean's wife, JJ. She's going to go down there for my moral support. And uh, we're uh, – it's an event called The Fittest Experience. This is my second time to go. I had to qualify online to make it. Um, I'm only one of 10 athletes in my age category, 50 to 54. Um, but they, what they did kind of interestingly is they decided to announce an event the weekend before. And so yesterday I had to do three things. I had to max out my deadlift. I had to max out the number of pull-ups that I could do. And I had to row 3,000 meters as a time trial. Those three will be combined into one score. So when I get down there on Friday of this week, I'll already have a score on the leaderboard. Wow. That's kind of cool. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, my, so my deadlift, what I was happy about, my prior deadlift was about 401. And uh, I had 10 minutes to establish a new deadlift. And honestly, it had been like a few years since I'd done that 401. And I hadn't deadlift that heavy in a while. So I, had, I was hoping just to make it to 400, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in the chaos and confusion of throwing stuff on, we're just throwing weight on there and throwing weight on and throwing weight in there. I got 30 seconds left. There's a bunch of plates on the bar. I, I go to the bar. My guy, I got 30 seconds. Guys, I got 30 seconds. And I stand up with that barbell. I'm not saying it was easy, but it, it, there was definitely more in me if I had more time. I picked up 431 pounds. I PR'd my deadlift by 30 pounds. Wow. I can't even give a wow because it's just unfathomable to me that you could pick up that much weight. So real quick, explain to people that don't know what a deadlift is. What exactly does that mean? So you have a barbell. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Sean. Well, I was going to say, Todd, to put this in context for you, it'd be like if I never picked up a barbell – and then I picked up 35 pounds. Right. I mean, that'd be incredible. And I've, uh, <laughs> yes, that would, Sean. That would definitely be incredible. So having, having been able to see the video, I obviously have context to it. But go ahead and tell the people out there that don't keep up with this type of thing what you did. So, so basically, a, we, you, you deadlift everything. Everybody deadlifts something almost every single day. Say, for example, you are coming from the grocery store and you reach down or you're, you're getting from stuff in your car and you reach down and you grab – two grocery bags on either side of your legs and you stand with those grocery bags. That's a deadlift. Anything you, anytime you pick something up off of the floor, that's basically a deadlift. Um, with so, your leg, not with your back. Right. But you, yeah, you pick it up with your legs, not with your back. Right. So a, a deadlift is a very, the very long weightlifting bar. You see people do bench press with, you see people do back squats with, and the barbell is on the ground with plates loaded on either end of the barbell. And you basically kind of bend over, by bending your legs <laughs> and not tipping over too much with your back, you grab the barbell on either side and you basically just kind of stand with that barbell till the barbell comes waist height. And that's a deadlift. The, and I managed to move eight Cadillacs is what they're called. So those 45 pound bumper plates, the, mm -hmm. the large mm -hmm. plates that you see, those are called Cadillacs or the nickname for them is Cadillacs. I basically had four of them on each side plus another two tens and uh, three pounds on each side. If, if you had to guess, or you may have the knowledge of this, what is the average that a per just a normal person could probably deadlift without ext extreme pain or exertion? Uh, m male or female male. Since you're male, we'll, we'll go with just say male, uh, probably like 175. Holy shit, Richard. I, I, look, I already know that you're very jacked. I, I, I see you, I can see all that, but the, to be able to equate that to lifting oh, oh, more than twice the, what the that, average yeah. person can do, dude. I mean, it just kind of depends. Dude. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, I know some, it just depends, you know, um, on the athlete and how much they can pick up and how, what their size is. So me being a shorter guy, mm -hmm. it, it's proportionally a lot, a lot. So yeah, it was that thing. So I'm going to TFX next weekend. So boom. Well, right. That is awesome. We get to have the week off, Sean and I do, and we'll probably watch tons of nerdy movies and maybe play some Xbox uh -huh. games. And I plan to eat some Doritos and have some beer while I do that, too. <laughs> I have four different events that I'm competing in. Three will be on Saturday, one on Sunday morning. And uh, I will be a I will be a I will be pooped and destroyed by Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming JJ's going to be driving back. She, 
<laughs> I think I dri- did. I drive back last year. Did Chris drive back that year? Uh-huh. I don't remember who drove back home, but man, it was a beating. And there, and, and if for some reason I do make the top something, there usually is a final event. So there's potentially a fifth and final event if I make the top three or the top five, or I'm not really sure how they're doing it this year. Well, you you know that Sean and all in our minds while we're eating Doritos and playing Xbox games, we'll be thinking of you and hoping you're killing uh-huh. it down there. I'll I'll be posting more uh, prof- profanity laced videos of my PRs on <laughs> Facebook for you. To that is to funny because whenever I, I I don't look at Facebook that often anymore, but you're one of the few friends that still comes up in my feed that I haven't said don't follow. Uh, <laughs> when I saw you get into the fr- to the lens and ah, I was like, oh holy shit! <laughs> I decided Let's hey, I my, my own Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> 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 now I will I will say this I am I'm not in horrible shape but I can't do what you do but I I will say what I can do is I can play music instruments and and I I I wrote the music for the theme music for the show and the reason I bring that up Richard is that during the break I found something that I'm going to share in here just because we're all pulling back and Sean you better be thinking of what you do and I swear to God if it's that you watch Babylon Five endlessly because we're coming to you and but it Richard be about poop. Uh, well, you, are, you already did say you would be pooped, and I, I felt I, like I was like, "Oh God, Sean's uh, going to talk about." Poop. I think I just dared I Sean away. to talk about poop. I stayed away. So I, I right. found the original open to "Minute of the Apes," which I don't think you've ever heard. When mm-hmm. it actually had lyrics, now these I'm going to play it. These lyrics are referential to probably some more of the conversation that Sean and I had in the weeks preceding when you finally joined. So okay. you're going to hear. Um, from the first of the film when when Sean talked about their the tucking their fruit baskets when they went swimming and things like <laughs> that and a gaggle of apes. So without further ado, we're gonna play this and, and let everyone hear it. did that how long did that play how long did you guys run with that with the lyric one i think our, uh, i think it was only the first season yeah, um, yeah i think so. back to the current version after that yeah well i think what it was is what i intended to do was to write new you know keep it the same I, I i toyed with okay do you keep it that kind of anthemic uh punky rock sound that it has every year or do you maybe change it next year to a bluegrass and you just change the different different yes. theme every time and, yeah you, you just a lot this, of work boss uh, and that's kind of where it got to that i was i even turned to my band because right. <laughs> my, my band has a lot of bluegrass elements i was like hey if i teach this to y'all it's it's five chords will y'all do it sure and then i thought i don't want to write more lyrics I, and that's when i came up with the idea of just dropping sound bites in i was like okay that's better yeah but now you've at least heard it. Now you're at least officially part of this uh, podcast after, what, five movies and almost six? Going, <laughs> we're heading towards yeah. six. Oh, can we make it Welcome to the life? fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for being a part of it, Richard. Thanks for caring. <laughs> All right, Sean. So what what hidden talent do you have that, that we've talked about my music? We've talked about Richard's physique and, and weight training and overall greatness. Magic tricks? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can do card some magic. Tricks? I can do some magic. I can do some card tricks. Uh, uh, I, I can go into very odorous environments, and it does not bother me. That is true, because um, for uh, the people that don't that, know, Sean has talent? no sense of smell. I have no sense send, of smell. Send Sean into the mines. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Uh, can, yeah, I tell, do. can I tell the audience what I, can I say what I think your greatest superpower is? What's that? Sean can consume more media than anyone uh, I've ever met in my life. That's true. This is so true. And remember it. 
Yeah. Well, and, it helps I listen to my podcast at three times speed and stuff like that. And well, I don't have a kid, and I work from home. And, 